Hello and welcome back to Shakespeare. We are working on the two noble kinsmen and we get to hear from Palamon today in Act 5, Scene 1. So this is the pre-battle scene. Um, it's not quite tailgating <laughs> that's going on, but yesterday we had our site and his fellow soldiers praying to and offering sacrifices to um, Mars, the god of war, to like get the god of war on his side that he will win this battle because he's like the only way that i'm going to win amelia is by shedding blood so if the god of war is behind me then i will likely win and after, after like while he was doing his prayer to the god of war like there was this big thunderclap and some armor clattered and stuff like that so our site took that to mean that yes mars is on his side so he will come out of this victorious so then he and his train leave the scene. I feel like I feel like y'all are basically caught up on the rest of the stuff so we don't need to go back into all the other things. Um, but then if we don't if you do feel like you need to get caught up, just watch the other episodes. <laughs> so now Palamon and his crew come onto the stage because they also were instructed to make their sacrifices to the gods, but um Palamon has chosen Venus, the god of love, instead. And his reasoning, therefore, so now it's just Palamon and his three soldiers on stage together. Everybody else has left to their various places. And Palamon says to his followers first, Our stars must glister with new fire, or be today extinct. Our argument is love, which, if the goddess of it grant, she gives victory to. Then blend your spirits with mine, you whose free nobleness do make my cause your personal hazard. To the goddess Venus commend we our proceeding and implore her power unto our party. And then they all go in front of the statue of Venus and they kneel down, similar to how they did with Mars. Hail, sovereign queen of secrets! who has power to call the fiercest tyrant from his rage and weep unto a girl, that has the might, even with an eye glance, to choke Mars's drum and turn the alarm to whispers, that canst make a cripple flourish with his crutch and cure him before Apollo, that mayst force the king to be his subject's vassal and induce stale gravity to dance. The polled bachelor, whose youth like wanton boys through bonfires have skipped thy flame, at seventy thou canst catch and make him to the scorn of his hoarse throat, abuse young lays of love. What godlike power hast thou not power upon? To Phoebus thou addst flames hotter then his, the heavenly fires, did scorch his mortal sun, thine him. The huntress, all moist and cold, some say, began to throw her bow away and sigh. Take to thy grace me, thy vowed soldier, who do bear thy yoke as twere a wreath of roses, yet is heavier than let itself stings more than nettles. I have never been foul-mouthed against thy law, never revealed secret, for I knew none, would not, had I kenned all that were. I never practiced upon man's wife, nor would the libels read of liberal wits. I never at great feasts sought to betray a beauty, but have blushed at simpering sirs that did. I have been harsh to large confessors, and have hotly asked them if they had mothers. I had one, a woman, and woman twere they wronged. I knew a man of eighty winters. This I told them, who, alas, of fourteen brided. T'was thy power to put life into dust. The aged cramp had screwed his square foot round. The gout had knit his fingers into knots torturing convulsions from his globby eyes had almost drawn their spheres that what was life in him seemed torture this anatomy had by his young fair fear a boy and i believed it was his for she swore it was and who would not believe her 
brief. I am to those that prate and have done no companion, to those that boast and have not a defier, to those that would and cannot a rejoicer. Yea, him I do not love that tells close offices the foulest way, nor names concealments in the boldest language. Such a one I am, and vow that lover never yet made sigh truer than I. O oh, then, most soft, sweet goddess, give me the victory of this question, which is true love's merit, and bless me with a sign of thy great pleasure. And of course, at this, then they start to hear music, and they see some doves fluttering away, and they're all like, whoa. So then Palamon continues, oh, Thou that from eleven to ninety reign'st in mortal bosoms, whose chase is this world, and we in herds thy game. I give thee thanks for this fair token, which, being laid unto mine innocent true heart, arms in assurance my body to this business. Let us rise and bow before the goddess. Time comes on. So, <laughs> there's a lot. It's a really it's a really long speech. It's like two pages if you take a look at it. And there's, you know, he starts off by explaining to his soldiers why they're praying to the god of love and it's because he believes that his love for Amelia is true. So, therefore, if any of the gods are going to back him, it's going to be the goddess of love because he's fighting in the name of love. And then he goes and he's giving the due respects to the goddess of love and saying, you know, love can knock the highest king down to the lowest subject and love can reignite sparks in 70 year old men who are decaying and love can conquer this and love can overcome that and all that sort of thing. So, you know, Venus, you must be the most powerful goddess that there is because you can change and do anything because you are love. So please, please help. <laughs> He's like, I, I heard a story of a man who was 80 who married a 14-year-old and they ended up giving birth to a son and I totally believe it. So look on me, Palamon, who is kind to those around him and who doesn't spread gossip and doesn't share secrets and none of these sorts of things, who is, you know, true and loyal. Please, please, please back me in my fight to win my true love because nobody has ever loved someone as truly as I have loved as I love Amelia. And as, as he's making these proclamations and, and saying these prayers, some music starts to play and some doves fly away, which he takes as a sign that Venus is on his side. So he's like, yes, this is amazing. This is great. So cool. Yes. Okay. I feel good going into battle now. Let's, and he tells all of his guys to stand up and, and bow to Venus, which they do, and then they all leave. And then Amelia needs to come in because things happen in threes in comedies, and ultimately this play is a comedy. And Amelia is also going to make prayers and give sacrifices, but of course she's got a really long monologue for hers too, so we'll get to hear about her prayers and sacrifices tomorrow. I will see you then. Mwah.